Hello everyone, my name is Anushri Duvedi. I'm a research and development engineer at Saranovas in Galway, Ireland. Hello everyone, I'm Behrouz Faridun Nejad, a postdoctoral researcher at National University of Ireland, Galway. Hello, I'm Giulia Luraghi, assistant professor in Politecnico di Milano, Italy. So, today I'm going to talk about in silico modeling of mechanical thrombectomy. So now I'm showing you a scan of a patient's brain showing different vessels. Here in the red circle you see there is a blockage in the brain formed by a clot. And because of that blockage, the vessels in the downstream are blocked as well, which are derived of blood supply. We do a, a procedure called mechanical thrombectomy on patients with the help of which the clot is removed and in the next picture you will see when the clot is removed the blood in the other vessels is restored and the patient is able to then live normally if the vessel occluded is fully cleared. This process is called mechanical thrombectomy and in my next slide I wanted to actually show you a procedure of how it happens in a patient in a silicone model. So there is a clot in the vessel and now a device is being deployed. This is an embotrap device which then engages with the clot and then the device is pulled back. And as the device is pulled back, the clot is also removed. And you can see once the clot is removed, blood supply is restored and the patient is then uh, sent back home. So before this thrombectomy procedure, it is very important that the device is placed correctly in position. So here you see an actual scan of this model on the left and then on the right you see what actually happens in the vessel. So when this uh, device uh, embotrap opens, the struts engage with the clot and that engagement kind of holds the clot in place. So when the device is pulled back, uh, the clot also moves. But this is not what the clinician see. The clinician would see something like this. He only sees the proximal and the distal markers of the device to be able to assess where actually the position of the stent retriever is. And here you also see the position of the clot in this uh, image, but the actual clinician is not able to see that. So we simulate this condition on a bench in a transparent silicon model to be able to understand in depth. Now, to be able to recreate acute ischemic stroke condition on a bench, we collect a number of scans from patients. These scans are then converted to 3D models, and then these 3D models are then created on a computer to be able to create different geometries of patient vasculature. Once we create these different geometries, we wanted to come up with the ideal geometry uh, with different uh, problems in the vasculature to be able to mimic the problems that clinicians see while accessing different vessels. As you can see, the silicon model was created after studying different vessels of patients to be able to come up with this model. Now, with the help of this model, we are able to do bench top thrombectomies in our lab, where we are able to successfully remove clots in different locations using different stent retrievers. And we also have the capability in our lab to closely mimic the clots that are found in patients, so we are able to recreate that scenario in, on a bench. So, to be able to uh, recreate mechanical thrombectomy on a bench, you need three important components. One is a vessel uh, anatomy, and then you need different type of clot compositions, and then a, a device that would treat the, the occlusion. And now uh, how this actually works is that we have to characterize each of these uh, options to be able to understand deeply. So I hand over to my colleague, Beruz, to explain you how the mechanical behavior of these clots work to make difference to the outcome of the patients. Thanks, Anu. Uh, so uh, the first thing that we should uh, investigate is reconstruction of the uh, actual uh, vasculature geometry from the CT imaging uh, from the clinicians. So we, we got the, the imaging data. We, we made a software to automatically convert the CT imaging to the geometry. And then we uh, constructed the finite element models from 
uh, dose geometry, and we also were able to position the blood clot in a right position uh, based on the medical images. Uh, the next step is to characterize the mechanical behavior of blood clot. There are a wide range of blood clots from uh, blood clot with high content of fibrin to the blood clot with high content of red blood cell. So we have tested uh, uh, all type of these clots uh, in different mechanical loading, including compression and uh, tension, and we found that the behavior of the uh, clot are very different based on the composition. The fibrin rich clot are uh, much stiffer compared to the red blood cell rich clots. Uh, we also tested the uh, real clots retrieved from the patients and uh, we found that the mechanical behavior of real clots are uh, very close to what we found from our synthetic clots that we made in the lab. Uh, the next thing that we investigated is the fracture risk of uh, clot based on the clot composition and why it's important because clot fragmentation is a big issue uh, during the fragmentation, during the mechanical thrombectomy. Uh, so we designed different type of testing uh, to investigate the uh, fracture of the blood clots uh, in different modes. Uh, uh, and we also did the finite element simulation and developed uh, uh, models uh, to replicate these uh, experimental observations. Now I hand over to my colleague Julia. Thank you, Berut. Okay. Uh, Han will just show you what the, the thrombectomy is and the roots, uh, the mechanical properties of clot. And now I'm going to show you uh, the simulation uh, to virtually reproduce the thrombectomy procedure. So you can see here different finite element models uh, of uh, the most used stent retriever for uh, the thrombectomy. Uh, from an engineering point of view, we start uh, observing uh, with a microscope the section of the stand and then we perform an axion tensile test to capture uh, the uh, mechanical uh, properties of the material of the stands. And then we uh, start by simulating uh, the crimping and the release of the stands. So for a validation purpose, we compare the real device on the left with the models on the right during the crimping and the deployment phases. Um, for uh, again uh, the validation purpose, uh, so we compare uh, the experiment of the thrombectomy procedure in a 3D printed silicon vessel and the simulation. And you can see that the simulation uh, was able to capture the fragmentation behavior of the clots during the procedure which is different if we change the clot properties. So in this case, the clot uh, reached the end of the vessel. So in this case, with no fragments at all. Uh, we develop also a patient-specific platform to uh, reproduce patient-specific thrombectomies. So starting from the images, we reconstruct uh, the vessel geometry, the clot geometries, and uh, we select the uh, correct clot properties in terms of composition and mechanical properties. And then we perform exactly the same procedure of the patients by observing the stand position with respect to the clot, and then we reproduce uh, it virtually and we perform the thrombectomy procedure, as you can see here with a successful outcome from these patients. This is an overview of different patients with different morphologies and vessel characteristics and different clot properties, length, location. And we perform the same thrombectomy for the patients. Uh, for example, here we successful outcome uh, because the clot reached the end of the vessel and also with unsuccessful outcome because the clot remained entrapped in the vessel. Thank you, Julia, for the amazing presentation on the showing us the mechanical thrombectomy simulations. And thank you, Berus, for uh, helping us understand the mechanical behavior of the clots, which is very important when um, stroke patients are treated with mechanical thrombectomy. So lastly, I would like to say that the, because of the INSIST project, we have been able to successfully collaborate and bring together our expertise in different fields of in vitro modeling, understanding mechanical behavior, and then generating computer models to create simulations of mechanical thrombectomy. And uh, with the help of this uh, 
collaboration, we are now able to uh, develop novel and uh, improved medical devices and may, it may also prove beneficial for clinicians in understanding uh, treatment outcomes in specific patients. So thank you very much.